what is it like being a Jamaican in Oklahoma, USA? <laughs> Hi, I'm Xavier Murphy, the founder of Jamaicans.com. And today in Jamaicans to the world, I talked to Heather McAdams, a Jamaican who is living in Oklahoma, USA. <laughs> Welcome, Heather. How are you? I am great. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. So which part of Jamaica are you from? Uh, Kingston. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <It's difficult. laughs> well, and, Kingston and Nandeville and St. Elizabeth and, you know. But Kingston that. mainly. Yeah, Kingston. No, mainly. you don't have to be ashamed. I'm you not. Know, I, I know like, everybody say Kingstonian. <laughs> they, everybody always says, were you really born in Kingston? Yes, I was, you know. So I hear everybody you. says that. I, I was born in Kingston, but I grew up most of my life in Portmore. So I, I consider myself a Portmorean or, you know, yeah. that's, where I, that's where I consider myself. <laughs> yeah. So which school are you representing? The Queen's School. Queen's High? Queen's High School, yeah. Oh, great. I, I love my Queen sisters. Um, there's, there's a story behind it why I love them, but I love my Queen sister, even though I went, they were not brother and sister school. Very helpful. Hmm. Which school did you go to, Calabar? I went to Jamaica College. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> I, I, had a Listen, I have friends from uh, the rivalry thing is you know well, we're yeah. amongst each other yeah but we all help each other yeah. you know when it comes down to it when you live abroad we're all jamaicans and, and that's it, you know yeah. so yeah. so tell us a story how did you get to oklahoma okay so the long the short of it is is that um my uh dad had died in 1983. I was still in Queens. I was graduating in 1984. And then after he died, I was kind of like, I worked in the halfway tree court for a little bit. And I was just like, I think I'm going to go because my siblings were here. They were in New York when that happened. So I was just like, you know, I think I need to, I need a, I need to fresh start. And that was kind of how it started. And um, mm. so I came and I you know, decided, okay, I can, I can do it. And um, so that's where I originally moved to New York. And mm. that's, that's the only reason I'm always here, like in the States to begin with, because I was, you know, I was just uh, deciding so what, what to do. In so what took you to Oklahoma from New York? So when I came to New York, I was, cause you know, we graduated very young in Jamaica in high school. Right. And um, I think a lot of my friends, too, when we graduated, when we came up to the States, um, there were, you know, we had to actually do another year of high school because they, um, and it was just like their basic American history classes just to like meet a curriculum to get into college. And so, and that's all, you know, it was just there for uh, two years. So, um went to college, went upstate New York to Binghamton, and we had a friend and she was looking into schools and wanting to move out of Binghamton because it's very cold. It's like, just like real upstate New York, very cold. So I said, well, she said, I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna check the school out because it's you know a really good school. And so I said, she said, you wanna come? And I said, sure. And I um, came, um, we're walking around the campus at the University of Tulsa and uh, met my husband who is an alumni of the law school. And um, we, we had just started talking, you know, and, and then after we let, he, we exchanged um, addresses and stuff because back then we didn't have, you know, email and all that stuff. So we actually <laughs> wrote letters. You have to write it though. We'll write it out. <laughs> so, so she, we actually exchanged letters for quite a while. And then, you know, we would talk fairly frequently. And then, um, and back then, you know, phone, phone calls were not like, no, you know, every phone call was a ser serious, serious charge, right? So, <laughs> oh yeah. So it was like, it was like every day we get, you know, we do that, we decided to do that. But, so we just wrote back and forth and then, you know, the relationship developed and I, 
at the young age of, mm, let's see, 22, 22, I, which I'd never done before. I said, I'm gonna take a shot. And I packed up and moved to Oklahoma because he's wow. originally born and raised here. So that was a giant leap of faith. But um, so we were together for a couple years and then we got married. So, and nice. that's, nice. that's, that's pretty much it. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let, let's talk let me back up a little bit so moving to yeah. america what was your biggest culture shock oh gosh the sheer amount of people just the mass of people and wow. um the difference in you know jamaicans are very um well i think most jamaicans are very polite and they're friendly and you know, you go anywhere and, you know, they kind of know where you are. And then you're in this, you are this one little fish in this giant ocean when you come to New York. I mean, you're right. just kind of like, you could be anonymous forever. Nobody, nobody would know. So that was the biggest thing. It was just, you know, because in Jamaica, when you go out, you know, somebody knows your parents or yes. your, your friend, yes. your cousins and this and that. So, you know, you can't yes. be. So <laughs> you're not, you can't hide. You, you cannot you cannot hide. hide. Yeah, you cannot hide. So, so no, the, the culture shock from New York to Oklahoma, what was that like? You know what? Um, it was actually pretty good because, you know, I grew up my life in Jamaica. I was used to that kind of smaller town feel lifestyle. And when, we moved, when I moved here, it's obviously it's, it's not as hectic as New York. There's less people, but and I really like the pace and that you know, it was just a, a not as crowded and there was a lot of like open spaces and things like that. So I just I just really liked it. That, that's the big culture shock for here because you come here and then everybody's you know everybody most everybody that I've met since I've lived here have been pretty nice. There are a few. Mm, but they don't they don't exist. <laughs> no, they're not paying rent in my head, so no. Um, but yeah, so that was the biggest thing. And I mean, like, I, and I was kind of a little afraid because this is kind of the Southwest. It's not true South, but it's right. South enough. Right. And I was terrified, terrified. And then, um, as my friend um, Lemoy says all to me, she goes, are you the only black person in Oklahoma? And I'm like, oh my gosh, no. So she, <laughs> but there is, it's very diverse. You know, it's still very diverse, nice. very diverse. So that's what nice. I like to call it. So. so, you know, the people, you talked a little bit about the people. Mm -hmm. I know it depends on where you go in New York. Some people say, oh, New York is about their, you know, people mind their own business. So, you, mm -hmm. you know, you're, you're not getting the little niceties in some yeah. places, again, not all, right? Yeah. Is is Oklahoma similar or totally different where, you know, the niceties are, are always coming? Always coming. <laughs> I mean, it's so, and I think here with most people, I think at the end, it's, it's kind of like you get what you give. So as you know, most people, everybody, you know, and I was always like afraid because it's where I live and most of Oklahoma really, um, I think we're a minority. So, um, you know, just listening to stories and stuff from the South and all of that, I mean, it took me a minute to like sort of feel okay. But it was amazing that people were, um, friendly, they were helpful. Um, people are very, even the person that you think would not even look at you, you know, they're very polite, you know, they'll open the door for you. And you're like, Oh, you know, they're very, people are like that interacting with people. So I like that about the place because eventually, you know, it, I mean, there was, I met a whole bunch of diverse people, so it was good. 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 Yeah. So Southwest food, what is the favorites there in, in Oklahoma? Well, I think, funny enough, it's probably Tex-Mex, which is like Texas Mexican. So they have a lot of those. And they have um, the, most of the people here, like true, they eat this thing called um, chicken fried steak. Have you heard of that? 
Yes. Yep. Yeah. So a chicken fried steak. And of course, their gravy was that's like. Up, that's up Texas. That's kind of, I mean, I've been, I've never been to Oklahoma. I've been yeah. to Texas, but yeah. I heard of it in Texas. Yeah. And since Texas is kind of like right up, you're right. above Texas. So you're yeah. right below you. Right below us. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so they, they, they love their potatoes. You know, my husband's, when I met my husband, he's like, and I start, when I started cooking, he goes, I have never eaten this much rice in my life. Because, you know, he grew up with potatoes and da da da, and I'm like, eh, you know, we eat rice, rice every day. day. Every day. <laughs> he's like, I don't understand why why we have so much rice. And I'm like, because we eat rice every day, breakfast. <laughs> you know. So, where do you get your Jamaican fix? Do you cook it? Um, do you go out, or is it a combination of both? So we had a Jamaican restaurant here for just like a little while and they were really good, but it just didn't make it. There was a couple that were here and they just didn't make it. And then um, there was, there is now a place here called Cicero's that actually serves some Jamaican food. It's on, it's a kind of a Caribbean thing. So they, they actually have oxtails and you know, different things, patties and stuff like that. It's pretty good, but it's actually not owned by a Jamaican. Okay. She's, I think they're from, um, oh gosh. Another Caribbean country. Another Caribbean country like Dominica. Cause they, uh, they have like um, Trini stuff. They have, okay. you know, uh, they actually serve a whole bunch of different things, but most of it, and most of the food that the people like, they're, you know, when I look at the reviews and stuff, they're always talking about oxtail. So, <laughs> I know. And then I, people here could at work, I actually, um, I made some oxtails for my friends at work because they're like, I think a, a Southern people here eat oxtail, but they cook it in a different way. Right. Um, it's kind of the same way, but they use different seasonings. It's not quite as rich, I think as ours is right right so but yeah it's i'm always getting asked to make curry chicken and oxtails and you know so but i have to say um my favorite food is uh stew peas right well you can't get pig steel here <laughs> <laughs> and i know i'm all about the pig steel i know probably people you, folks, know. you know if you're going to oklahoma you're gonna go visit heather and you know the one thing she's missing is her her Trenton in uh, well not Trenton her stew peas. Her stew peas. <laughs> well, we know the Trenton is in the stew peas, but let's leave <laughs> that alone. <laughs> and because um, I, you know, my friend that lives in Atlanta, she's like she gets the uh, she said, you know, we have this bucket, we get this bucket of pig steel, and I'm like, oh, I wish I could get that. Well, I was like, let me send me a picture of it, and so I have found so much Jamaican food on Amazon. It is. And I got a big old bucket of pig steel from Amazon. Oh, you did? Yes. <laughs> I have a bucket full of it. Because before we would, you know, my mom taught me, she would, we knew how to make pig steel, like, right. sausage, you know, so we would do that. We would make our own. So, and then I found this and I was like, hmm, okay. So nice. Yeah. So, you're, so you have you have your supply then basically. I have my supplies. I have um, you know, I get peppers and stuff like that. And you know, when I if I travel to like Atlanta or New York, I try to bring back stuff and you know. Good, good. So let me ask, is there any Caribbean events that happen there in Oklahoma that's on an annual basis? So not so much structured anymore. When we first when I first moved here, they had Reggae Fest. And it was like every year. And um, that was really good because they had, they actually had people come in and vendors come in. Um, we had, uh, you know, the live music and all of that, that people came in from different states, um, Jamaican artists, Caribbean artists and stuff. And so for a while that was good. We would go every year and then they stopped it for some reason. Mm. And now um, there was an event a few weeks ago and I didn't get to go. Um, that they were having a reggae festival. So I think okay. there are events, it's just, you have to kind of get into the community. And then there are, okay. yeah, then there's a couple um, uh, restaurants and stuff that sponsor and, and have parties and stuff like that. It's okay. not quite in, quite in where I live. It's I think south of where I live. 
Okay. So, so if you search hard, you might be able to find Caribbean events. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. There, and then there's like a, they actually have a, um, for a period of time, they actually had this couple that would bring Jamaican food, like fish and like they come in that day from Florida and they bring, you know, all the bread, hard oil bread and all that kind of stuff. And so it would have pop-up shops and they're like, okay, we're coming this time. I'm, we're going to have this, 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 and this. And so, Whoa. yeah, so I was able to go and get, you know, and I'm surprised how many people were there. Um, so is, is, is there like a, a, you know, a Caribbean, Jamaican association there? No, I don't think that there is. I mean, if, I mean, that's a good idea. <laughs> but um, there are so funny backstory where um, when I first started out of scrub school, um, I'm a surgical technologist. So when I first had my first hospital, I went to, and I think this is where the whole um, oh that you said oh you're a Jamaican. So <laughs> so when I was actually in when I first got out and I started being the OR, um, the, I was Jamaican, the nurse was Jamaican, the anesthesiologist was Jamaican, and the surgeon was Jamaican. Wow. Yes. And I was just the like, whole team. you know, and I'm like, and so we're like, are you all playing during surgery as you're preparing and everything? You know, some reggae music there, blasting <laughs> oh, yeah. down and and someone yeah. bringing in the Aki and salt <laughs> because yeah. typically surgeries are early in the morning. I worked in the industry. Yeah. And so it's freezing yeah. inside there. Yeah. And, you know, people are trying to get up. So there's usually music in there too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, yeah. So sorry, I, I didn't I didn't let you finish. Was that the, the, the backstories of all Jamaicans? Yeah, we're all Jamaican. And I thought that was the neatest thing ever because in such a remote, like you know, so far from home, and right. to have all these people that are professionals that you know, it was it was it was nice. It was a it was a nice moment. Awesome, so, awesome. Yeah. So Heather, I know you'll start the Caribbean Association there. And then I'll hear about the annual event through you. You and I'll be in touch and say, Xavier, we're having this annual event. <laughs> and, and so we'll get that going. <laughs> okay. I mean, I have, I work, I work a lot. <laughs> Let me preface no that. Pressure. I no mean... pressure, Heather, no pressure. <laughs> yes. So yeah. um, what's the funniest maybe comment or question you may have gotten when someone from Oklahoma realized, hey, this is, you know, Heather is Jamaican. Every single time anybody finds out I'm from Jamaica, they're like, why are you here? You know, every single time. Why are you here? I would not, I'm like, well, you know, dynamics are different. <laughs> I'm alive here. <laughs> but they were like, I just, I can't believe you moved. And I'm like, well, okay. So let's explain, you know. <laughs> So, so yeah. they're thinking of weather and just the, the yeah, yeah, they, they have like, they don't, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let me ask you this, and I'm being nosy now. Is your husband originally from Oklahoma? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. So yes. you definitely Born have someone can guide you through the state if he's from Oklahoma. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, I'm I'm winding it down and listen, I really appreciate you on short notice just jumping on and talking to me. I know you're a busy lady. What what would you say is, is a place, an event, or something if I was to visit Oklahoma? You say, Xavier, you should go see this or you should come to this event or you should do that. What what would you say that would be? Um the, the Tulsa Fair, for one thing, um, it's like a, it's ten days of just madness and craziness, but it's fun. And I used to go every year when I first start when I first started living here, and then I don't I don't even go anymore because I'm like I'm not doing that. That's just <laughs> that's just too much people. <laughs> I'm not going. <laughs> but um, there nice. is that they have yeah. Tulsa because I actually live in Owasso, which is north of Tulsa. It's like about fifteen minutes. 
Okay. Well, Tulsa is a very like progressive city. It's in the northeast part of Oklahoma. So that section is actually a lot more progressive than say Southern and Western Oklahoma. So um, we have this foundation, a couple of foundations that actually took over um, a big part of one stretch. We have this, we have the Arkansas River that flows through and they built this phenomenal, uh, it's called the gathering place. And um, you, there are so many things to do. I mean, so I, for the kids, for, I mean, it's a walk, it's like several miles and they have like all the sports courts and things like that. And, you know, just lots of activities and stuff. Just, just, and they're free. So, nice. yeah. Nice. So, yeah, that's really cool. So um, in terms of, well, I know there's, there's a, you know, college sports team <laughs> and, oh. and, and the, the NBA team, team uh -huh. there, um, are they big sport, are y'all big sports fans of all your teams there? Um, me, not, not necessarily the Thunder, because I'm like, I watch basketball, but I like college basketball. So my husband um, graduated from Oklahoma State and University of Tulsa. So we're cowboys in this okay. house, OSU cowboys. So, um, but his half his family went to the University of Oklahoma. And so there's like always, you know, friendly jabbing back right. and forth. <laughs> so, yeah, but that, we watch a lot. We watch a lot. We, got, we, we, when our kids were little, we, you know, they played a lot of sports and, right. you know, and that, that is a big thing here. It's like sports is a huge thing here. Here and in Texas, probably, as you know. Right. Oh, yeah. Very, very big in Texas. Very big in Texas. <laughs> so, you know, it's kind of funny. I mean, but yeah, we, we, um, we, we do a lot. For a while, we were like, you know, we actually went, we golfed for a while. Okay. And somebody really needs good. to teach me. I, I have golf clubs no, no. here that were given to me and I have never used them. <laughs> okay. Let me retract that. I hack, I don't golf. I hack. So I don't want I'm gonna get any ideas that you know. Oh yeah. Oh, when y'all no. get when y'all get to Oklahoma, check with Heather. Yeah. If you want to win a game, you'll win the game. You'll, you'll win the game. You'll, 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 yeah, she'll she'll be very hospitable. She's gonna make sure you win. Right? <laughs> wink wink. You're gonna make sure they win. hundred yeah. percent. So yeah. So that that's been fun. Like we we went right. to a couple of PGAs <laughs> and things like that. So that was good. But so, um but yeah, I, it's big. So I had a I had a question I was to ask earlier. Cost of living. What's the cost of living like there in Oklahoma? So not bad, actually. When I moved here, it was ridiculously lower than East Coast, of course. Um, since the pandemic, um, we have a lot of people from the West Coast, you know, that they are starting to move into our area. And so the housing prices have just gone up because, you know, we have these people that come and they are used to living in a, you know, they, they have a two bedroom or a three bedroom house with one and a half bath in California. That's almost a million dollars. Right. Okay. So when you come here, you get a million dollars, you probably have eight bedrooms and, you know, <laughs> so like a nice house. Right. So, um, I think that the housing prices, thing, you know, food is cheaper. Not anymore, though, with inflation. But, you know, overall. Right. Things are things are better in terms are, of pricing than the right. West Coast and the East Coast. Oh, most definitely. <laughs> most definitely. <laughs> what what yeah. advice would you give someone who's saying, you know, I'm thinking of moving from one of the, you know, one of the states. Jamaicans, we're, we congregate in. Yeah. In, a couple of states here. A couple, yeah, you know. yeah. Uh, or, or maybe three states. Four, four places. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I won't call it, it four, but kind of four places. So yeah. What advice would you give to someone who's saying, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of, of making a change and, you know, uh, Oklahoma, what, what advice would you give them? Um, it, w it, it, would, it would be better than you think. People are like, you know, you're, you're out here, you're just in the middle of nowhere, you don't have any Jamaican people. You know, there's a misconception that there are no black people here. There are a ton of black people here. Um, so they, cause I think people have this fear of, like I did, 
inherent fear right. about moving into a place where, you know, you're going to have to like be on your P's and Q's all the time. Right. So no, that's really not it. Um, what I would say is that you will get way, 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 way more bang for your buck here. Okay. And okay. opportunities are here, like jobs are here. They're always trying to get jobs here. So um, but I think uh, the city of Tulsa got this contract, I think, or they're working on it to get, to make some parts for the electronic vehicles. Mm. So that's like, like a, a, like they make them. So that's a huge thing. And so they're working on Google's here. You know, they, they brought a lot of businesses have come in here and also, um, you know, the work is here. If you have a training, you, the education is cheaper. So, nice. um, so if you have the training, I mean, there, there are opportunities here. Great. All you know? right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So here's a scenario. Yeah. You fly out to Oklahoma, probably gonna have to stop somewhere, Atlanta, probably or yeah. Miami or one of these places and you're headed to Jamaica, you get off the plane. What is that first thing or food or event or what is that first thing you're doing? You exit the airport. What are you doing? I didn't even exit the airport. I got, I was, I got a party. <laughs> <laughs> like three patties. Like, yep. Yeah. All right. So so we know what else to bring. You have your yeah. stupid supply. Yep. Come in. Make Patty. sure we bring Heather some patties. Yep. <laughs> I free. I get. I bring them if I go at lunch. I bring them and I freeze them. I, I'm, I just you know pop them in. Do, but, you, do you do you share? That's a key one. Do you share? Well, I bring two separate packages. So I put one. I'm like, okay, if you guys want to eat that, because you know then they all eat it, right? But I said I will. I will like stretch mine out so I don't like eat it all in like one week. <laughs> so I try to like have it for a few months, you know. And then like, you know, sometimes my son will go on uh, and I'll look and I'm like, did you eat one of my patches? And I said, like, so I have to like repackage it and put it in something that he will never touch. Put it back in the freezer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, and, and this is not in my typical script, but how is how, he navigating having, you know, a parent from a Jamaican culture and the American culture? Um, how is he navigating that? Well, maybe the better question was how his friends navigated that, but um, he, what they're her, my, both my children were, um, you know, they, they they got the mommy stink eye from early, so they knew like okay. they were the pot of, the pot of broccoli when it, when it went, it went. <laughs> and then when I think the first time that ever happened, they both looked at me like, and what she said, and I'm like, come on. So, but, you know, and then they know, and, and then they know that once that starts coming out and everything, they're like, yes, mommy. Okay. Yes, mommy. Okay. Do it now. Yes, mommy. So, oh, they know. But Great. I can tell you that um, one thing about that is that the difference with my, with children of Caribbean parents and, or Jamaican parents, let's just specify, is that people actually like them because they are polite, they're mannerly, they do their work. You know, the parents are very involved. Uh, I think even, you know, there's just a spectrum of people here. There are just a lot of kids that, you know, you know, their parents don't know where they're at. So like my house um, for a while, like, you know, I didn't really let them go. Um, I said, everybody can play at my house if that's what, right. you know. But you're I not going to their house. Uh -uh. So, and I, you know, it wasn't like all about that, you know, that, you know, they got to the age where I want to sleep over, sleep over. And I'm like, mm, <laughs> no. you know, and I let my, I, my daughter, she's pretty savvy. And I let her sleep over one night. She right. begged and begged and begged for weeks. So I was like, okay. <laughs> and I told, it was just like over in the next block. And I told her, I said, you know, anything happens. If you feel the slightest bit uncomfortable, I, I don't care if it's three o'clock in the morning, I'll come and get you. I was getting her. She comes, she says, mom, I can't sleep here. It's, this is creepy. And I was like, okay, I'll come get you. <laughs> but I think it's a discipline because- That we grew up on the- We grew up on. Pass it, pass it down. 
Yeah, and I don't, um, there's, I am not even remotely close to the discipline that I got from my parents. Like I'm, I, not, I'm not either. I, and yeah. I know, I think it, it, it waters down. It waters down. And I'm but not saying that's a bad thing. No. I'm not saying it's a bad thing, yeah. but, but it, it, you know, it waters down. And, and so, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, Heather, yeah. listen, thank you. Thank you. Thank You're you. Welcome. you know, I enjoyed it. I, I did too. We could go on and on. We could go, yeah. I know, yeah, I know when I visit, you know, we're going to come by for that association and, and, yeah. and so. So yeah, as I've been saying, um, I, I, I don't have a far, there's no Oklahoma expression. So I just say, head up, lick a more. Lick a more, walk good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, take care. All right, take care, Xavier. <laughs> Show some love now. Hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and hit that notification bell, that way you don't miss a video.